but the team announced before Tuesday's game that Pavetta was placed on the 15-day disabled list with a right elbow flexor strain. First pitch tonight is coming at 7-10. Bruins lost last night to the Carolina Hurricanes 4-1. Now they're off until Saturday night. They'll travel to Pittsburgh and take on the Penguins. The NHL reportedly preparing a contingency plan that could end up relocating the Arizona Coyotes to Salt Lake City, Utah as soon as next season. Celtics and Bucks making NBA history last night by combining for a record low two free throw attempts in the entire game. Celtics fall 104-91. Also, Giannis Antetokounmpo got good news today after an MRI. His left Achilles tendon is fully intact. He had to leave last night's game with a left calf strain. Jacksonville Jaguars and the other Josh Allen, not the quarterback, reached agreement on a five-year, $150 million contract that includes $88 million guaranteed. And former Baltimore Ravens linebacker Terrell Suggs arrested for assault late last night in Arizona. It's a result of a March 10th incident at a Starbucks where Suggs allegedly brandished a gun and threatened to kill a fellow customer in the drive-thru. Headlines are brought to you by The Okers Company. Are you looking to upgrade your technology? Go to Okers.com. Okers.com. You can find out how. Proud partners of your New England Patriots. I'm Jim Murray from Boston's Home for Sports 98.5 The Sports Hub. Kevin Majori has got you next and a half. No matter where you go, you're always connected to Boston Sports with the 98.5 The Sports Hub app. Download it wherever you get your apps today. You have dog crap in your system. This is the Baseball Hour with Tony Maz. They did nothing this offseason. Brought to you by Bigelow T, Gravely Zero Turn Lawnmowers, Corona, Jackson Lumber, Blue Moon Belgian White, Team Impact, and FindMassMoney.com. On 98.5 The Sports Hub. Shot into left field. Duran moving back, and he will not make the play in fair territory. Runner will hold at third. And Durant simply did not make the play. That ball should have been caught. Instead, second and third and two down and life for Baltimore. I don't know if he lost this one mm-hmm. in the sun or, or something because I was just going to talk about how the foot speed in left field is different this year. Durant's covering more ground and he gets to the spot and just sort of whiffs at it and just misses it. Yeah, there is sun out there, and especially this kind of a timed game at 2.05. It ended up starting about 2.30 uh, with everything going on, but you can tell that sun is just behind, and if you take your eyes off a click, and who knows, he could have been right in there for a second, because usually in the sun, you'll, you'll it'll go in there for 1, 1,002, and then it comes out, but you have to stay with it. But you can tell, we saw with his Oakleys, the sun immediately in live, but then looking back there, who knows? Yeah, it wasn't the sun. It was everything else. That's the way it usually works with the Red Sox. You don't lose because of the weather. You don't win because of the weather. But we're really not going to start with Jaron Duran. We are going to start with the Red so- the, the state of the Red Sox, or maybe I should even say the plight of your Boston Red Sox. We'll open up the phone lines right away, 617-779-0985. It is a full hour on the baseball hour tonight, a full hour So we'll get to a lot of the things we didn't get to last night uh, after the home opener at Fenway Park, a 7-1 loss to the Baltimore Orioles. And uh, Jared Carabas himself joining us as he does every Wednesday. Jared Carabas presented by Blue Moon Belgian White. Be sure to relax and enjoy the ball game with Blue Moon Belgian White. That's Blue Moon born in a ballpark and brewed for baseball. So, Welcome, Crabgrass, as you are uh, here every week on Wednesday, as everybody knows. It's going to be here. So uh, I know where you want to start, so I'm just going to tee it up for you. I'm going to put the ball in the tee and let you swing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Since, uh, since we last spoke, yep. I'm putting it on the tee. Mm-hmm. Since we last spoke, the most significant development that has happened with the Red Sox, and all these sort of came down at once yesterday, but the biggest of all the developments was the loss of Trevor Story for the season. Injury took place Friday night in Anaheim against the Angels. Announced yesterday at Fenway Park in the home opener. Story, done for the year, will undergo shoulder surgery on Friday, leaving a massive hole in the middle of the diamond for the Red Sox. What should they do? Here's the thing, Tony. And I had this feeling in the offseason when you looked at their approach in free agency and what they more so did not do via trade. I had the question of, are they invested in 2024? Do they care about 2024? Is this about the future? Uh, and I don't even know if it's about the future because I, until they until they go back to their the ways that they were, we'll not have the answer to that question. 
But when Trevor Story goes down for the entire year, 10 games into the season, you look at it and you say, all right, if you care about winning in 2024, you have to do something externally. Don't tell me about internal options. Internal options are for right now. Like you can go Pablo Reyes, who's not a good defender. You can go David Hamilton, who the Sox prospect guys will tell you is not an everyday shortstop. Uh, there's stopgap in the in the uh, immediate. There are those options at shortstop. David Hamilton might not be a big leaguer, but go ahead. Right. He, well, he's definitely not an everyday player at shortstop for for a major league team. You will find out if they're invested in 2024 or not, depending on what they do about this Trevor Story situation. How are you going to replace him? You can't replace him, but at this point, all I want is someone that can play the, the position defensively because for what Trevor Story did offensively in Colorado, I think we're smart enough to never expect to see that again, but where he was adding value to this team was his defense. If you can get someone in here that can just play the position at a high level defensively, I don't care what he hits. I genuinely don't care. But if they just say we're going to stick with internal options when we've already seen those internal options, we know what they are and they're not viable, then you're sending the message that we're punting on 2024 10 games into the year. That's it. That's all it is. Okay, so you want help at shortstop. Some yes. way, somehow, you want help at shortstop. Now, I'm going to ask the question that most anybody would ask in this situation, and I think I know the answer. Who? Well, I think when you look at the roster, if you're going to go internal options and everyone's like, what about Pablo Reyes? What about David Hamilton? The best option is right there in front of you. It's Sedan Rafaela. But in doing that, you move him in from the outfield and you take away a premier elite defender in center field and that creates a hole. What do you do in center field now? I guess we go with Jaron Duran in center field. Is he a good center fielder? Uh <laughs> No, depends on the it depends on the day. Yeah, I guess like he can he he you know if you look at the defensive metrics in left field, it's weird. Like he's a really good above average defender in left field. Yes, he is. I, I know that the play yesterday was not great, but the metrics will tell you he's a really good defender in left field. You put him in center, and he's not at the top of his game. So you're going to have to replace Sedan Rafaela in center field, which is a very very tall task. Okay, would you rather be weak at shortstop or in center field? Oof. Come um, on, Jared. That's easy. I understand. Like, I know what you want to say, but after the last year or so, not having Trevor Story, it is glaring when you don't have a good defender at shortstop. Yeah, you got to have the, the answer, shortstop. The answer, the answer could. I mean, but Sedan Rafael's defense won you two games in Oakland. I agree. So it, there, you could argue one or the other. Uh, I think when when you when you're lacking one, you're gonna pick the one that you're lacking because when when Kike Hernandez was playing shortstop, you're like. Man, we really need to do something about shortstop. But if you have a, a when Alex Verdugo was was playing some center, you're like, man, we really need a center fielder. So it's it's one or the other. It's kind of like whack a mole. Whichever one you don't have is the one that you need. Okay, so look again. You're gonna have to live with the fact that there are holes on this team. You're just gonna have to live with it because they've already lost a couple of key pieces. And again, I still think that they can compete without Story. I don't think Story's all that big a loss offensively. I really don't. And I'm not being a wise ass about it. Defensively is a different story. Huge. But if you have a choice between shortstop and center field, you take the shortstop. Okay, you, have, you take the shortstop. Now, let me tell you why. It's obvious. He's going to have more chances. I mean, over the course of the year, it's gonna, the shortstop's going to be involved in way more plays than the center fielder is. I'm not telling you that means the center fielder's unimportant. Also, I wouldn't put Duran there. Okay, and I'll tell you why. He's good where he is. Yeah. Don't mess with him. Mm -hmm. Okay, let him play left field and just leave him there. Now, sniff around, see what's out there as far as outfielders. You're more likely to find at this. I was looking at the list of free agent shortstops that are still available. It's garbage. I mean, it's complete garbage. Uh, you know, unless you want to add Alberto Mondesi again. No. You want to live that one again. He's not a real person. Okay, so so I don't I don't there was garbage out there at shortstop. I I don't think, you know, this isn't a case where uh, Jose Iglesias is out there, and you're going to be able to bring him in to play some defense. What are some other names, Tony? So I'm just reading you on the list of Spo tracks. So some of these are listed as second baseman, but Didi Gregorius, who hasn't played in how long? Right. He's cashed. Uh, Wilmer Defo. Okay. I don't know who that is. Pat Valaika. <laughs> Jack Lopez. Okay. Kevin Newman. 
Newman. I mean, it took it took two names for us to get to the we don't know who this person okay, is. Okay, so then yeah, Ed Alberto Mondesi's on this list, et yeah. cetera, et cetera. Now, I have not punched up center field. I should probably do that because my guess is you can find a functional outfielder who can play defense. I can guarantee you. Hell, Jackie Bradley Jr.'s out there. He just retired, right? Oh, he, he just signed a deal with a team in the oh, uh, League. Oh, Independent League. That's yeah, right. Something like the something Ducks. The Long Island Ducks, maybe? Yeah, so uh, Billy Hamilton is still out there. I don't know whether he can Tommy really... Pham's still out there. So so my point is, I guarantee you there's a guy in the minor league somewhere that can run it down but can't hit. Guarantee it. Somebody has one. Okay, you could give up a fringe prospect somewhere, a ball player, and bring in a center fielder, to which I, I would be all for it. My point is you can find that, and if not, I'd give Tyler O'Neill a crack at it. Now, what you do in right field, I guess it would be Abreu. You know, you'd be limited there. Wouldn't you rather the shortstop? Wouldn't you rather the... No, I would move Rafaela to shortstop. Well, I, I mean, I'm saying if it's not broke, don't fix I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it with, with Rafael leaving him in center. But, I mean, there's got to be... Right, but where are you going to get the shortstop? Well, what, what you're saying. In the minors? Yeah. I think you're more likely to find an outfielder. I do. A center fielder, though? Uh, I think you could probably find someone, yeah. I do. I think, and that's the only reason I say it that way. Because, listen, I was against moving Raphael out there. Yeah. I don't think you have a choice now. Yeah. I don't. Uh, and I might be wrong, Jared. I'm just telling you that if they go that way and they can play defense and continue to pitch like they've pitched, which is a whole other discussion, which we'll get to in a bit, they could hang around in some games. Devers is going to have to hit. Casas is going to have to hit. O'Neill's going to have to have the best year of his career. You know, and I think Devers and Casas will hit. And they could be something close to 500. Mm -hmm. Okay, something close. So let's do this. Let's take a couple of quick calls. A lot of people on the line already because we had a short show last night. And frankly, Jared, I think they like to speak with you. Like that. Hank's in North Quincy. Hank, what do you got? Hey, guys. How are we doing today? Good. Um, I just wanted to make a point on a comment you made uh, on yesterday's show, actually, Maz, which I started to look into. I'm not a big you know, metrics guy, but when Pavetta made those comments about he thinks the clock is to blame, I kind of dove into pitch tempo and how long it's taking some of these pitchers to throw pitches. Pavetta's basically throwing at the same rate that he threw last year. Mm -hmm. Bieber's actually slower from this year than last year, and Strider's right on par, too. So I think you're you're hitting the nail on the head. I think they're just, to Chris Martin's point, uh, you know, the reliever, they're throwing a lot harder and they're throwing a lot more break. They're changing a lot of their pitches. Um, I'll hang up and let you guys talk. Yeah, so, so Hank, this is something I want to get to in the next segment. It concerns what is causing the injuries with the pitchers. What is causing it? Nick Pavetta said in spring training he thinks it's the pitch clock. Ken Lee Jansen sort of backed him up on that comment. Chris Martin did not. They all have different opinions. I think it's the idea that it is the pitch clock to me, frankly, is asinine. I think it's asinine. I think it's... Uh, frankly, deceitful and manipulative and disingenuous on the part of the union. I don't think it has anything to do with the pitch clock. Zero. Zero point zero. I think it has nothing to do with the pitch clock. But we'll get to that shortly. Dean and Shrewsbury. Dean, go. Uh, so, Maz, and my understanding is you thought that uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. was overpaid during his time in Boston, right? Uh, I don't remember exactly, but I think at the end when they brought him in for twelve million, it wasn't necessarily the right move. That was my okay. that was my complaint with ba Bradley at the end. They worsened the team. I didn't like the move that a Bloom made at that time to bring him back. Okay, so he he got paid fifty three million over seven years over his post arbitration year. His slash numbers are very similar to Sedan Rafaela's this fought this uh, point in their career. So if you like Bradley, which I do, I agree we shouldn't have brought him back for $11 million, but over the course of his career, he's he's got very similar numbers, and Rafaela obviously isn't as a lead of center fielder, but he's a better base runner, and his, his deal is similar 
to Bradley's, but during an era where the uh, luxury tax is going to be higher. I so I you, like that. Deal. Yeah, I got you, Dean. That you like the contract. Why are you throwing your hand up in the air? Well, because Sedan Rafael has played how many games in the big league level? 40. We're, yeah, we're comparing slash lines for 40 game sample over two years where, you know, he got called up last year and he's played 10 games this year. Actually, he hasn't even played 10 games this year. He didn't play every day. I thought he meant his slash line in the minors was similar to Bradley. Oh, okay. But anyway, that's, even if so, that's go the ahead. Point. Yeah, but I'm just comparing like offensive numbers uh, over 40. 40 games when you know he's new to the league. I just I don't know. I didn't love so it. how do you feel about the Raffaella contract? Um, it's nice. It's nice to have someone like that locked up. I mean, you're buying out what two years of free agency. Uh, like I like the idea. It just if you're going to do something, just do it with conviction. It's we. Can, it's hard to evaluate it because we don't. We still don't really know what he is. We don't know what he's going to be. Like a lot of the guys that we wish the Red Sox did that with. They didn't blossom for two, three years. Like Mookie Betts, we didn't know what we had in Mookie until like 2016, maybe. Uh, same thing with Xander. Like he took uh, two, two and a half years to really come into his own. So you are rolling the dice. Like you can't praise them or criticize them one way or another for a few years. And if Rafaela ends up being like, we know he's great defensively, but we don't know he's going to be offensively at the big league level. So if he ends up being a guy, then you praise him for it. And if not, then it's. That's kind of just the risk that you run when you're trying to get these guys on uh, affordable deals that you're not running into, you know, the one. I mean, it's a crazy comparison, but like Juan Soto making $30 million in arbitration. It's like, okay, well, if you give him a deal before that and uh, it ends up being a guy that's going to contribute in a big way, well, now you're saving a bunch of money. Yeah. So look, I, I, you never heard me say just quickly that it's a stupid deal. I don't, I no. don't, I mean, financially, it's not. They can survive it. I also don't root for the Red Sox. I don't root for John Henry to save money. Exactly. I don't care. Like, I want the players to make as much money as possible. But you, you want know, good players. I want good players. And if this deal allows the Red Sox to go out and spend money on a great player because you've now uh, gotten Rafaela at this affordable rate on, on a luxury tax hit, what is it, six and a half million or something like that? Mm -hmm. um, then you can go out and spend money. But if you don't go out and then spend the money on the big guy, then who cares about the, the money that you save? On, on getting a deal done early. Yeah, my the only thing I said about this deal is he doesn't feel like the kind of guy that you had to go out of your way to sign at this stage. No. Okay. Casas so, was that guy. Right. Is that guy. No, and Casas is unsigned. Now, Bayo, I'm happy about. It's good. I mean, I'm more worried about what kind of pitcher Bayo is going to be than I am about the contract. I don't root for contracts. I don't root for contracts. I root for good players. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when I say uh, what I want as a watcher of baseball and someone who follows the team is good players and a winning team. That's what I want. That's what everybody wants. I don't root for good contracts. The contracts don't win games. They can allow you to spend money in other areas that help you win games for sure. Absolutely. But to me, I don't even know if Raphael is an everyday player. I have no idea. The like gloves I, every day. He what? The gloves every day. Oh, yeah. The glove is every day. But you got to hit every day to be a big league regular. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Carabas is here. We'll continue with your calls. I do want to get to uh, the Nick Pavetta injury. I think there's a fascinating story here with Nick Pavetta. It really relates to other things going on in baseball as well. But Pavetta is really a vehicle to get into that discussion about what is causing these injuries in baseball. What is the real source? And especially with the Red Sox, given the way they've pitched this year. But we'll get to your calls as well when we come back. Anything you want to talk about with the team with Jared Carabas all night here on the Baseball Hour. Stay tuned for more of the Baseball Hour coming up on the Sports Hub. Hey, it's Maz for Bigelow. We all know how important it is.
Cora on the Trevor Story injury saying, you know, it's a significant thing. And this is another problem with sort of the Red Sox approach this year. To your point, Jared, they built a team that has no margin for error. Frankly, a lot of people thought it wasn't good to begin with. Okay? Now, again, whether we were right or wrong is still open to debate. But the point is, if they were going to compete, Mm -hmm. and maybe they still are. I don't know. I still think they can do it. I think there's enough there for them if they pitch well and find someone who can play shortstop, they'll be okay. They can withstand the loss of Trevor Story, who, who, by the way, is a good player. I'm not telling you he's a bum, okay? I just think that offensively, he's grossly overrated. I've always felt that way. But now that Story has gone down, his defense was obviously valuable. He's a steady shortstop. And be- even better than steady, he's pretty good. Now, he's never won a gold glove. I don't consider him to be like the greatest shortstop I've ever seen. But he's a above average, fully capable major league shortstop. You don't have any doubts about him out the position, right? I mean, Correct. like, okay, you know, now that he's down, they have no plan B. There's no plan B. It's like going into the year with one catcher. You know, you follow me? It's just like, well, what was the backup plan? There are certain guys that you can't replace. Trevor Story should not be one of those players. You want to tell me Raphael Devers is hard to replace. I agree. Offensively, it's hard to find guys that hit like that. Okay, you want to tell me that Tristan Casas potentially would be a big blow because they're relying on him for, let's call it, 30 and 100 just to make it easy. Fine. Okay, another hard to find. A shortstop with a 680 OPS during his Red Sox career or whatever it is, and who plays good defense, should not be that tough to find. It really shouldn't. Now, maybe it's Rafaela, then trade for a center fielder. But the fact that it is, if he takes down their season, boy, what an indictment that is on the roster building. Well, I think the, the question that we haven't even posed here yet is, of the news that we got yesterday, what was the greater loss? Was it losing Trevor Story for the season? Or what if this Nick Pavetta injury ends up being uh, a lot more serious than we were told? Like a a mild strain. But as my podcast co-host Dallas Brain likes to point out, what's a strain? Well, a strain is a tear. Uh, So I think, um, you know, we went into this season looking at the rotation where it was a lot of maybes. Because I think you and I have spent so many nights talking about, is Garrett Whitlock a starter or is he not? Okay, well, he's looked good so far. He's looked okay. His last start was very meh. 101 uh, pitches and four and a third. Yeah, that was very meh. Uh, Tanner Houck has looked great so far, but we all have had the discussion about, can he see a lineup for a third time? He's looked good, really good. Ten Excellent. strikeouts in his first time out. Um, six shutout innings is his most recent outing. But we depended on Lucas Giolito for innings. You will get zero innings from him this year, and you will like it. Nick Pavetta now, that's another guy where it's like, we don't even have to think about Nick Pavetta. We're just going to get 32 starts from him, and we'll see what it looks like at the end. Well, now you're not going to get 32 starts from Nick Pavetta this year. That's where, when you talk about, uh, you pull one of the the pieces out of the puzzle here, can you still continue moving forward? To your point about Trevor Story, yeah, you can find a shortstop that's going to post a 680 OPS uh, that's a good defender. You can find one of those guys, but can you find one? And I know that you don't like his, you know, you, you don't believe in his offense, but the potential is potentially a 900 OPS. Right, that's right. I don't know that we're going to get that uh, ever from him at this point because it's just been, it's been nonstop injuries, some of them not his fault, but um, I, I kind of look at this as you've already lost Lucas Giolito. And that was supposed to be your innings guy. And then Nick Pavetta was supposed to be right up there in innings. Two most reliable starters. And now what do you have? You have the guys that we were looking at. Like, we don't know what these guys are. Cutter Crawford, like a full season of being a starter. What does that look like? We don't know. Garrett Whitlock, Tanner Houck. We don't know. Those are the only guys that are left in in your rotation right now. It's scary. Yeah, Yeah. I can understand why Cora would be nervous. Part of me wonders on some level whether Cora might be happy if they suck and he gets fired in the middle of the season because he collects his money and doesn't have to deal with it. Uh, Martin in Texas. Martin, go ahead. Hey, Tony. I just wanted to say that uh, I agree with what you said about um, Cora earlier in your show today about you know not saying the right thing last night, even though he did speak the truth. He had a good point there. But uh, they just need to – move Rafael at a shortstop because all the pitchers on the roster are ground ball pitchers besides, you know, maybe not Cutter Crawford, but they're all ground ball pitchers and they need to play like they need six outs instead of three. 
And that's what's getting them in high pitch counts, more likely to be injured throwing more pitches or having to try harder. It just has to be done, and you can just go with the same outfield as last year. The outfield was not that bad last year. Yeah, Martin, I don't think they have a choice is really what it comes down to. Nate and a card. Nate, quickly, what do you got? Yeah, Tony, I'm, I'm looking at this um, roster. I'm thinking, okay, if you move Sedan Rafael at the shortstop, how far off is Marcelo Meyer from coming up? And then being an option maybe in July or August, um, if you know if we're still in it at that point. Okay, Jared. Um, I don't want to say pretty far. That seems disingenuous, but not close. Uh, he hasn't played at AAA. He was hurt last year, and he I didn't play well at AA before he got hurt. Right, but he was hurt pretty much all. He got yeah, hurt sure. in like May. Yep. Uh, and he tried to play through it, and I think the numbers suffered because of it. That's a guy, and I've seen the take. I get it. Like we were talking about it in the back there, where Andrew Benintendi skipped AAA. Is AAA important? Um, but when you're, it, it's not so like when when Andrew Benintendi got called up, it was like we are about to go on three straight years of first place finishes when he got called up and skipped AAA. It's like, hey, get up here now because we are about to hit this launch. We're not launching anything right now. And they could protect him, Jared. Yeah. Because of that, they had a good team, and they could he could just come up and play okay, and it was fine. He was in a lineup with, with dudes that could bang, and, and this is not that. I don't want to have him uh, – because all these guys, the way that they the Red Sox talk about those three is that they are the saviors of the franchise. So the second you introduce one – then you're kind of saying like, hey, we're, we're cutting the ribbon here. It's the grand opening of the run that we're about to go on. And I don't think that that is this year. No, I, it's not. They're not ready for it. Ben Attendee also was drafted out of college. This kid's a high school draftee. He's younger. Like there was there were just more innings already under Ben Attendee's belt. Sure. And at bats, all of that stuff. So I'm with you. I don't want the kid anywhere near here. Okay. They don't have a good team. If you had a championship caliber team stuffed with veteran talent, and you could bring him up here and let him make his mistakes and hide him. And when I say hide him, that way there was no pressure on him to be the savior. He Fine. needs to supplement. Right. That's exactly right. It's the best way to bring in young players. If he came up right now, everyone's going to be like, here we go. Exactly. And it's not, here we go. Can't do it. No, not right now. Cannot do it. Uh, I want to get to the Nick Pavetta injury specifically and also about how it happened or how it may have happened because I, I think it's a fascinating story, and it really relates to how the Reds, how good the Red Sox will or will not be this year, just depending on how this experiment goes with um, Andrew Bailey, the, uh, the pitching coach, and their new approach on the mound. Uh, but first, Kevin Majori's got your headlines. Sports Hub Headlines. The Red Sox continue their series with the Orioles tonight at Fenway Park with Carter Crawford on the mound facing Baltimore's Cole Irvin. Nick Pavetta originally scheduled to be the Sox starting pitcher, but the team announced before Tuesday's game that Pavetta was placed in the 15-day IL with a right elbow flexor strain. First pitch tonight is at 7-10. The Bruins fell to the Carolina Hurricanes last night 4-1. Andrei Svechnikov scored the Michigan goal to open the scoring last night. The Bruins are now off until Saturday when they take on the Penguins. Uh, the NHL is preparing a contingency plan that could relocate the Arizona Coyotes to Salt Lake City, Utah as soon as next season. The Celtics are the first team in NBA history to not shoot a single free throw throughout an entire game as they lost to Milwaukee 104 91. Giannis Antetokounmpo had to leave the game last night early with a non contact injury, but according to Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN, his left Achilles tendon is fully intact and Giannis's return to play will depend on how quickly his left calf strain heals. Sports Up headlines are brought to you by Best Ford. Looking for a great deal on a new Ford? Go to the Best First. Best Ford in Nashua. Head to bestfordofnashua.com. I'm Kevin Majori on Boston's Home for Sports 98.5 The Sports Up. Your next update in.
I think he was after. Mm. I'll check, but I think he was after. Okay. Okay. We'll look that one up in a minute. Uh, Patrick in Charlestown. Patrick, go ahead. Oh, Mass, you know more than me. Cautious is a confident Not guy. Really. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think you put a lot of mental energy in the contract and getting paid. And I, I've been watching. I don't think he's kicking butt this year. I think he's struggling. Uh, I'm worried that maybe it's just his ego and the contract stuff. I'll hang up to listen. Okay, what do you think, Jared? Are you worried about Casas at all? No. No, and I don't think he has an ego either. I think he has the opposite of an ego. Uh, I think he plays to uh, appease himself. <laughs> he's he's not looking to impress you. He's looking to play the best that he possibly can for the expectations that he set for himself. I don't I don't have any worries about Tristan Casas. No. I don't really have any major uh, issues about uh, Casas either. Actually, despite he hasn't played great in the early part of the year, I think that kid's going to hit. Todd in Salem, Todd, go ahead. Hi, I just want to talk about uh, uh, the baloney that they're throwing too much now or too hard. Because until the 1970s, mid to late 1970s, there was a four-man rotation. We didn't have the arm injuries. And also, as far as the speed, they're not throwing any harder now. They just changed where the radar gun's pointed. If you watch a documentary on HBO, Nolan Ryan's 101 miles an hour is actually 109 yeah. in today's. No yeah, way that... Todd, I don't think you want to use Nolan Ryan as any sort of standard. The guy no. was a freak. And there's no way he was throwing 109. No. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, like, Nolan Ryan, like, everyone, like, the old-timers want to use Nolan Ryan as the example every single time. Like, he's an alien. He would go out there and throw 350 innings every single year and punch out uh, uh, 500 batters. There's no one that you can't hold up another example in history to be like, Look at what this guy did. It's very comparable to Nolan Ryan. Like it's just Nolan Ryan was in a league of his own. Yeah, and if the caller thinks that there were uh, there were twelve, thirteen man pitching staffs back then, where every guy was throwing ninety five, he's out of his mind. No, a hundred and nine. Give me a break. Half the guys on your staff couldn't throw ninety back then. For crying out loud, don't be delusional. Riley and Framingham. Riley, what do you think? Hey, so uh, I'm a current college pitcher, and uh, I was just curious what's leading to these injuries, that maybe the workload. I know over time for me especially, I throw a lot of things while I'm younger, so maybe as these guys get older, it causes more injuries. Uh, I don't think that's it either. This is another one I love. The workload on big leaguers is less than it's ever been. Yeah. None of these guys are asked to go more than five innings anymore. It's you, got nothing to do with the workload. Like Rarely do you see a guy go 200 innings now. I mean, it's ridiculous. You'll get less than 10 every year, 200 innings. Mikey Romero was drafted in 2022. Okay. Okay, so he was the year after. He was a first-round pick, number 24 overall. You never hear his name. And uh, right now he's in A-ball. And let's see, last year, and this is another reason why you get all geeked up about your draft picks. Last year, at high A, he hit uh, 100. That was one for 10. So that's not really a fair. Sounds like he's hurt. Uh, in Carolina League, which is lower A, he hit 217. It looks like he was hurt last year. So he's had some injuries, but basically his uh, career minor league average is 249. The OPS is 693. Uh, he has been borderline garbage so far. Again, maybe some injuries here. I'm not dumping on the kid. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you that I'm really picking on the prospect people. Why don't we draft shortstops? They do. They do. They just all can't play. Almost every year. Anyway. You think we can sneak in one more call, Jared? Yeah, Ryan, not? that good with you back there? Can we do Oh, it's Kevin now. Kevin's back there. He skipped out, probably went to take a leak or smoke something in the back. <laughs> Steve's in Rhode Island. Steve, what do you got? Hey, Tony. Um, What about Rafi moving to short? Uh, he's, uh... <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, does he mean like short fielder, like in softball, you there's, put him in the outfield? There's no way that was a serious call. Holy crap. Are you kidding me? You got there, people who want to take serious. him out of third base. You want to move him to shortstop? Come on. I was going to say we can't end on that, but I feel like we should we should end on that. Cut the crap. Rafi, it's short. <laughs> That's a good one. He he can't uh, be serious. That made me laugh. That ended, that ended my day on a high note. <laughs> All right, Jared. Tony.
It's good to see you. Done for the week. Yeah, see you next Appreciate week. Appreciate your time here as always. Thanks for having me. Hopefully they're still in the race by next week. Never know. They're going to turn this thing around. They're going to play better. You mark my words. Okay. It can't be this bad. 2024, the year of positive Tony Maz. If it is, we're going to have to take on a second team to talk about here on the uh, Baseball Hour. Dodgers are a good one. Yankees also a candidate. But whatever it is, we'll 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 figure it out. Who's in tonight, Kevin? Joe Murray. Joe Murray in. He'll have you. He's got you for the full night, too, right? No games tonight. Full show tonight. So there you go. Joe Murray's got you for the balance of the night. Carabas will be with us next Wednesday. Baseball hour back tomorrow night as usual. 6 p.m. shop. We'll see you then. This is the Baseball Hour.